Hello Doctor Who fanatics, don't have a big finish audio review and today I'll be taking a look at episode 4 of season 4 of the Tom Baker Adventures which is Deathmatch starring Tom Baker as the Doctor, Louise Jimison as Leela, John Leeson as K9 it's written by Matt Fitton and directed by Nicholas Briggs for this full cast audio drama so if you want to skip straight to the review of Deathmatch and you don't want to see how this audio is presented then there is the time, if you have or haven't skipped Let's begin the video. So for the cover art, which reminds me of the 2007 versions of the covers, because it doesn't have the Doctor on the cover, we have Leela right by here with a spear, a nice light burst behind her, and little bits of fire and flame, love it. And we have the Red Knight right by here, and we have the mast on the podium, and with some televisions in the background. Yeah, very similar to Vengeance on Varos, this story is. Yeah, the cover art, it's simple enough, it's nothing fantastic. So we have the side, we have the 4th Doctor picture by there, Doctor Who, Deathmatch, and it is 4.4. And for the back we have what this story is about, which I'll place in the description. We have the cast members and what roles they'll play, which will also be placed in the description. And it is 16 minutes approx, which is included behind the scenes of Requiem for the Rocketman and Deathmatch, since Requiem didn't have that on offer. And if we open it up, we have the booklet and the disc. Now mine is a little bit wobbly, so it can be like broken quite easily since it was quite damaged when it was sent to me. But yeah, there we have other fourth dot releases with the Exxon, Darkness of Glass, Rick of the Rocket Men, the two novel adaptions of Romance of the Crime and The English Way of Death, and the brilliant Philip Hinchcliffe Presents Brock set. And then we have the leaflet. If we open it up, we have the writer's notes from John Dorney. And the credits, but yes, the next instalment, as it doesn't show anymore, is Suburban Hell. And yeah, you can flip it over if you desire for the Tom Baker layout. So overall, what do I think about Deathmatch? Now, personally, I was really looking forward to this story. Yeah, a lot of people haven't really been looking forward to this. Not just the fact that it's written by Matt Fitton, who isn't really a favourite writer of mine personally. Maybe others may like him more than me, but personally he's not one I like to talk about too much. But yeah, a lot of people have not really been looking forward to this instalment of the Tom Baker Adventures Season 4. The premise of this story will actually leave spoilers to Requiem for the Rocket Man. so if you want to skip the premise, and you don't want to have to decrease your enjoyment of Requiem for the Rocket Man, even if you haven't listened to it, then to skip. It isn't a huge spoiler. But skip it if you desire. But yeah, the premise of Deathmatch, it follows on from the events of Wrecking for the Rocket Man, where Leela was actually departing from the Fourth Doctor to join with a character which is Marshall, and Leela gets taken and stolen from the Master in his TARDIS, which is leading to Deathmatch. Then Marshall gets into contact with the Doctor, saying that Leela has been kidnapped from the Master. And that the Doctor has to rescue Leela. So it's one of these simplistic sort of storylines where it pretty much just follows on from Wrecking of the Rocket Man. But yeah, comparing the two, Wrecking of the Rocket Man has a little bit more experimentation rather than this one's a lot more simplistic. So yeah, you have skipped a wise decision there. But yeah, if you have or haven't, then it's your choice. But I just gave you the warning anyway. But yeah, the plot of this, I can now. Won't go into spoilers. Yeah, the plot of this is very simplistic. Now I'll go to this uh, part by part. Where part one, as I said, it's pretty much simple. No twist or turn. So the Doctor has been given one thing to do. He has to do it. And there are some good moments where Leela does get into the arena and fight foes. Especially a good confrontation between her and the Red Knight, which is very good. But yeah, you can tell it's a very Leela story because... It's a survival of the fittest. Kill or be killed, as the master likes to say it. So yeah, it's a very good territory for leader, this is. And then uh, part two, where I would say more of this, more of the action happens a bit more, rather, part one's very talky, it is. Yeah, part two, it does build up more of the action a little bit more. But still, very simplistic, and not really any... It's a very simple story, he hasn't really dived in huge directions. He, Matt Fitton has pretty much played the story safe, where he doesn't really take drastic measures. 
So yeah, we go through the characters of the story, then we have the Doctor. And his performance was very good, it was. And I definitely, definitely love the scene where the Doctor and the Master do this con confrontation, where he talks about Gallifrey, I believe, in their past, or something like that, which I absolutely love. Yeah, some great moment, uh, a fantastic moment with the Doctor and Master at one point. And then Leela, who was a very good highlight of this story, where she battles foes and kills them off, which I, I absolutely love. And again, Deathmatch. Hearing that word definitely sparks to Leela. I can't really argue that she does an absolutely fantastic performance. Also with battling with the Red Knight. And with some very good chemistry between Marshall and Leela. I'll dive in more to Marshall's character later on because it's quite a significance of a change where it is to Requiem to Deathmatch. K9, who I thought had a lot to do in this story and had a lot of good dialogue. And yeah, he had quite a lot of fun stuff to do, K9, so if K9 fans would be happy. And then the Master. Yeah, good performances, of course. Jeffrey Brevis always has a fantastic performance, but I just prefer him in Requiem for the Rocketman a bit more. Well, actually, a lot more. Now we come to the supporting characters with Castrella. Who you can say is the companion in orbit to the master, where she finds people getting killed is something to laugh at. That's where I got to the point where it reminds me of Avengers on Varos a little bit. Yeah, not really that standout, really, just by the master's side, and that's pretty much it. But still, very good. And the Red Knight is actually Castrella's son, so yeah, that's very interesting as well. The Marshall, who was a lot of a change, he was. At the time, Marshall didn't really have, didn't really want to have a relationship with Leela, but then in Deathmatch, this relationship's changed quite a lot, where they actually uh, trust each other a lot, and a very good relationship happens in there, so quite of a sad moment happens in the story. And then Vargrave, again, I can't remember him playing that too great of a purpose, rather I find the characters not too great. The only one supporting character where I can say he he was great was Marshall, but Vargave I found him quite forgettable if I'm honest. And then we have the Red Knight, who was this person who wants to think he's better than everyone else. And I do love the scene where Leela ties up uh, the Red Knight, which is quite funny. Best overall character, perhaps Leela I would say. She did a fantastic performance. It's a little Doctor Light, he was still in it a lot, but he only had one thing to do. And that's it. There's no big, there's no twist or turns to it. It's just a, a straight line death match is. So overall, death match, I think it lies at the same balance of the Exelons. It was a good story, but nothing overly fantastic. There's nothing I do criticise it too much, but it's just not one of the better stories in my opinion. And it's just such a simplistic, flat straightforward story with nothing exciting about it. It doesn't have that energy in it. Rather than Wrecking for the Rocket Man, John Dorney puts so many fantastic twists and turns, motivate the listener to carry on, but rather than this, it's just like, well, there's nothing happening, there's nothing going on, which is utterly fantastic. It it doesn't keep that enjoyment. So then Deathmatch gets a 6 out of 10. I do put it over average because there are some bits I like in it. It's not a bad story, it's just a little bit simplistic. So thank you very much for watching the review of Deathmatch and I'll see you for the showcase series. Have a good one.